Uh, really enjoyed all those speeches. I hope I don't let the side down now. Um, I think I'd like to say that I feel very privileged to be here still as the leader of Medellin Care now. I am proud to be a Cornish nationalist and I am very proud that we're all here today with the conviction that Cornwall has a right to self-government, just like Wales, just like Scotland, just like Brittany. There is no difference whatsoever. And right here, right now, challenging times ahead for the economy, could you think of a more appropriate time that we should have our own National Assembly, our own powerhouse National Assembly that can actually fight for and protect the interests of our local communities, our families, our people? That's what we need. What are we getting? We're getting the unedifying spectacle of this unitary authority being created around us, even though we never wanted it. Now, you're all probably fully aware MK has never been in favour of this Liberal Democrat, I call it experiment, <laughs> because experiments normally go wrong, so it's a good analogy. I think it's descended into farce, and any sensible government would step in and pull the plug. The reality is, we know that is not going to happen. And I want to say clearly now, our focus as a party, we have to look forward. We have to see how we're going to relate to this new council and do our best for Cornwall within the structures that we actually have. But, this is very important, it is also right that we condemn the whole debacle and remind one and all of who is responsible and their arrogant disregard for the communities of Cornwall and what ordinary people think. We've got to make it clear who is responsible for the incompetence undemocratic nature of the whole thing, the behind closed doors meeting that are going on all the time, the rising costs, it's probably gone up while I've been speaking, and at the same time, the ridiculous payoff to a chief executive who's already got another job as a chief executive, it's just an insult. It's little wonder that everybody, myself included, is just so angry at the moment about this whole thing. You're all angry, I take it? Yes. Brilliant. Let's get the pantomime going again. <laughs> now, I think it's right and proper and healthy that political parties have different opinions. It means the voters, they can go out, they can make their choice, they can put their cross for the thing that most that they think is best for them. It's about making a nice choice. Now, I do not remember Colin Breed Andrew George, Matthew Taylor, Paul Tyler, I do not remember any of those people when they were standing next to me on the doorstep of 10 Downing Street with 50,000 signed declarations for a Cornish Assembly <coughs> that actually a single tier council was what Cornwall needed. I don't remember any of them actually <coughs> stepping back, excusing themselves from the photo call and uh, on, the gra on the same grounds and then saying, oh, I won't have any of the free publicity. They were there. I remember the 2005 general election and the county council elections. Their manifesto said Cornish Assembly. It was clear, no equivocation. I remember when they got control of the county council, what did they do? They actually put in set a, a series of plans which included that within 12 months they would produce detailed proposals for a Cornish Assembly to be agreed with members of parliament and if possible those awkward district councils. The Liberal Democrats reaffirmed their commitment to that campaign for Cornish Assembly. I've, I've got a few quotes. I always like my quotes because the thing about quotes is they always come back to bite the person that made them when they're a Liberal Democrat. <laughs> Andrew George, making it clear that the campaign for devolution was not local government reform. And he said, the government will not get away with their belief that they can fob us off with a rearrangement of deck chairs on the Titanic of local government. Pretty clear, pretty clear. And I remember right after that, they jettisoned the whole thing and went for a unitary authority. I mean, make no mistake, they have let Cornwall down big time. And what we have got to do is to point out their duplicity and the betrayal of everything that we in this room actually hold dear. Saddest thing, it hasn't come as any surprise. I'm 41 years old. And I think this has been going on my entire life. And I dare say there's probably some people a little bit older and it's probably been the same for your entire lives. I see history repeating itself. December 1967. I was about so high. Uh, six months old. Very talented 
young, the young thing. I was on to my lady book of uh, lady Bird's book of political reforms. Um, <laughs> two Liberal MPs from Cornwall, John Pardo and Peter Bessel, they actually wrote a letter to the Times newspaper. And this is what it said: The Cornish people have the same right to control their country, its economy, and its political future as the other Celtic peoples of Scotland and Wales. That same year, they made it clear that Cornwall needed its own parliament. The same year, sorry, the following year, 1968, the Liberal Party, they launched a policy document called Power to the Provinces, co-authored by Paul Tyler, uh, latterly the MP for North Cornwall, now in the House of Lords as Lord Tyler. <coughs> Paul Tyler has very often commented on this document. It's kind of to him, I think, like a badge of honour of his commitment to devolution for over 40 years and his commitment to Cornwall. Well, we've tracked down a copy, thanks to the wonders that is Ted Chapman's attic. <laughs> and I have the recommendation here in this report. And bearing in mind what his colleagues were saying at the time, obviously this report says self-determination for Cornwall, doesn't it? Let's see. West Country Province, it says, covering Cornwall, Devon, and the western parts of Somerset and Dorset. Mm -hmm. However you look at it, the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s, right through to the present day, they want to have it both ways. Mm -hmm. They'll tell the electorate of Cornwall one thing, they'll do the exact opposite. They aren't even consistent enough to put it similarly in print. It's, it's that upsetting. And we've got to make it clear that people cannot trust them anymore. They just cannot trust the promises they make. I want to go back to Paul Tyler, the great co-author of that. The Lib Dems have actually wheeled him out twice this year to have a go at MK and me in particular, which I've taken as a quite a compliment. We must be really rattling them to a degree. In one letter he wrote, Dick Cole is standing in the way of useful new powers for Cornwall because he campaigns for complete home rule. If you insist on all or nothing, you risk getting nothing. We have an unrepeatable opportunity to achieve greater self-government, but it still could be lost. Playing word games about the name of the new council is so petty it defies logic. So there you go. The Liberal Democrats, most experienced Cornish politician, doesn't even know the difference between a council and a Cornish Assembly. Doesn't that specify to you why we're in the mess that we are and why we've got the problems that we have? Yeah. Yeah. That said, we can't rely on any of the other London centred parties to do any better. The Labour Party talks of devolution, but to them Cornwall is totally and utterly invisible. We are merely the fag end of a government region that stretches westwards from Bristol. That's it. As for the Tories, certainly no friends to our cause. David Cameron, he actually name-checked us earlier this month. He was talk musing about local identities or something, and he said, just look at the rise of Cornish nationalists. I think we shouldn't fight that. I think we should build on top of that to create an inclusive <laughs> British identity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what he means whatsoever. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. but I do know that he was in um, West Cornwall earlier this year and answering a question for the Snipes Times and Echo specifically ruled out any idea of a Cornish Assembly or devolution. He just talked about maybe a few more, a few more powers for your local councils. So tar him with the same brush, I say. <laughs> now I'm not saying this because I just want to slag off our political opponents just because I want to be negative because I don't. What I want to say is, I want to impress on you all the task that faces us. Now, and it's an important task, and we have a duty, a responsibility to put the case for self-government for Cornwall, because if we don't, nobody else will, and that is a big, big responsibility. As I said before, we have to look to the future, and I think the point that this fight back gets serious has to be the unitary elections. We have to go out there, we have to persuade the people of Cornwall that there is an alternative to all these undistinguished politicians that have got us in this awful state at the moment. To actually show you there are politicians that will actually stand up, fight for Cornwall and defend Cornish interests. We have to take them on at the ballot box 
We have to defeat them and we have to put Cornish nationalists at the centre of local government in Cornwall. And it can be done. What is more, it must be done. And I give you this pledge, we will do it as well. We will get MK councillors on that unitary authority and we'll give them hell.